Randomizer, those not familiar with Dragon Warrior, the object is for our racers to find and defeat the evil Dragon Lord, and they will access Dragon Lord Charlock Castle by getting a bridge via an item called the Rainbow Drop, and they'll be looking for items to get that Rainbow Drop as they fight enemies and gain experience and gold to help get stronger and get weapons, armor, and items. And we are underway, and we're finding the torch in the... A couple of torches, it looks like, and the magic key, the obligatory magic key to get on out of here. Looks like uh, lighting up caves is not going to be a problem for either of our two runners here. Ooh, maximum strength of six. That's a pretty low starting roll. A little unfortunate there. Uh, we'll see. Now, one of the things that is, well, a lot of things are randomized here in the game, and most notably the specific elements of chaos the enemy hit points oh and wow so a crit right off the bat for 234 for bt that's got to be the earliest first kill of the entire tournament oh so my level eight. oh my goodness wow he got heal more off of that too. Oh my goodness, this is bonkers. You know, I'll imagine Drake attacking Jake Hoper. I didn't I see know. what else he got besides uh, heal more. Uh, there were a few different levels uh, or a few different spells with that leveling up. Oh, and he got another one. Wow, and jumping up to 10, not even two minutes into this seed. Oh my gosh, and Jake Hoper is going a critical hit, but unfortunately this green dragon uh, not the monster that he's looking for. So we see that it's eight experience to get to level one on Jake Hoper's side. One of our uh, spectators in chat noting that uh, BT got 29 response speed in just those last two levels alone. My goodness. Well, this is definitely a surprising start, one maybe a little bit beyond expectation. Jake Hoper uh, making the interesting play here, trying to just maybe find a town right off the bat, and uh, BT actually being the first to spot a town. Uh, we'll see if he can make it here. I have all, all those spells acquired, no heal spells, and oh, the town is Hawk's Nest. Now, Hawksness could be useful. There could be a, a potentially useful item hiding there. Unfortunately, uh, BT looking to maybe uh, stay at an inn and recover himself here. Uh, you know, without uh, wanting to get that MP back, uh, no way to heal up right now. And no way to cross the swamp if that's what he wants to do. Oh, oh. one hit point left. Okay, that was uh, one step less than I thought it would be. There you go. Good job on him counting out that HP. Certainly a very gutsy play. And yeah, making one heck of a run here on one HP. My goodness. Well, I guess all that agility being acquired in those, those first nine level ups and oh, but the metal slime attacking and well, Jay Coper finding the Star Wyvern, and it has sleep. Edgy, I'm pretty sure it's that Star Wyvern. I saw I saw BT credit for exactly six damage to get that first those first sets of level ups. Yeah, he, oh, he killed know. two Star Wyverns. Going one for one, so maybe the Metal Slime is the easily killable one. I think Metal Slimes have. Uh... The the weak dragon lord fire, but uh, not showing it here. 
Well, they have stop spell. I don't think the uh, a wet noodle can have sleep. So, and oh. yeah, there it is. I saw that earlier on BT's side. So, BT finding the mountain cave. Yeah, you can have uh, multiple enemies spawn with five or less HP, but uh, I don't think the the quote unquote wet noodle can have any other abilities. Wolf Lord didn't seem to be a problem for BT there. All right, first chest in the cave is some big bucks. Wraith Knight also breaking off the sleep spell. Very unfortunate here. Jake Hoper's struggling to get his first level. Ooh, and red slimes are powerful. And the rich get richer. Wow, no shortage of spells for BT here as he hits level 11. Just eight experience separating Jake Hoper from his first level, but still unable to find a kill. And now doing a little bit more exploration, maybe a gold man able to do something here. And we've got the silver harp and a torch in two more chests of the mountain cave, and all oh, the gold man with hurt more. So mountain cave is required for this seed uh, as a uh... Yeah, BT picking up that Silver Hawk, one of the items he's going to need to finish the game. Oh, an Erdrick Sword! Oh, we got Hawk the big stick! Eight. Oh my goodness, and BT, everything just going right for him so far in this seed. That is huge! And the wizard with an early jump in Hawk's Nest. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ryu pointing out in chat, you know, level 8 is, yeah, less than 300 away. Just uh, one Star Wyvern, but uh, unfortunately, Jake Hopper just not able to find anything to, to go his way here. And BT finding Sherlock. That is where the Dragon Lord awaits. Wow, BT getting another level, and that level comes with 19 response speed. This is bonkers, folks. Uh, to answer a question in chat for uh, Simple Sarah, yes, it was a critical hit. Oh, and Magidrak, he's giving away 213 experience for just being total pushovers as well. I believe the crit did six damage at level one, but I may have uh, may have not quite caught that.
Oh my gosh, taking out a Demon Knight for just 39 experience, but getting yet another level. I didn't quite see what 13 brought, but everything's just coming fast and furious here for BT. We, we are ten, at the 10 minute mark in this seed, and oh, the wizard with Dragon Lord breath. Oh my goodness, and another level for BT. That level coming with a spell. Not sure what that spell is yet, but uh, pretty much already with everything he needs is BT here. That's just icing on the cake. Well, all of uh, yeah, all of the ten spells are guaranteed to be learned by level sixteen, but they can be learned in any particular order that's predetermined by the seed that is rolled and. I think at glancing there, I think he may have all 10 spells at level 14. It definitely looks like he has most of them. That That is for sure. Wow, 115 attack power already. Yeah, 75 strength plus the 40 attack power from Eredric's sword, the strongest sword in the game. There's not much that BT isn't going to be able to just cut down. And yes, that looks like every single spell in the game, uh, not even 12 minutes in. This is just, whew, this is breakneck pace. And the wizard using Dragon Lord Breath, but. BT with enough hit points to be able to withstand it. Making the smart play over here. Go ahead and check Hawksness. You know, you've got, again, every spell at your disposal here. And you don't know what's waiting here uh, in the shop spot uh, to fight. You don't know what's behind it. So you have, he hasn't found anything else up to this point. So might as well make this play here. And it looks like the knight is guarding the hawk's nest spot. And wow, the knight hits for quite a bit. And it's the token, Erdrick's token. So in true knight fashion, packing a punch, but uh, going down to a single hurt more. And yeah, BT picking himself up yet another one of the progression items, and yet another level! Twenty-four MP, my goodness. Uh, Drake, he's hitting kind of hard. And now he's deciding to attack it, and he does so, hitting it for 47. Wow. Yeah, you just swatted that Drakey out of the sky. Not triple-digit experience, but uh, not worth nothing either, that Drakey. Jake Hopper trying to see if he can find the the edge of another zone here uh, to try and look for something else to kill and uh, so far just not coming up with the right amount of luck here and uh, PT also getting sent back home. Yeah, having 70 hit points and getting hit for exactly 70 with the Dragon Lord Breath by the Wizard. In chat noticing, you know, this is looking uh, eerily similar to the race earlier today where uh, Zarnax was met with the most unfortunate luck 
and uh, you know you, you really hate to see this kind of thing happen but uh, anything can happen in Dragon Warrior Randomizer that is for sure you never know when you know things could turn around for Jay Cooper at the drop of the hat BT making a lot of uh, plays on the map you know he's seen a lot of things now but uh, not found everything yet and everything he's found so far has been really close to home as Jake Hopper finding I believe Mountain Cave and Sharlock and looking at the wares as the well the potential items or yeah the, the potential weapons and armor that are in the weapon and armor shops are randomized as are the prices so in this case, BT able to purchase a large shield that normally costs eight hundred dollars for only about a hundred and forty. Oh, flame sword, pretty cheap here. Uh, not quite able to afford it is BT, but uh, he can make that amount of money in short order if he if he so chooses. Although BT already having Erdrick's sword, no no need to purchase it, unfortunately. And BT finds the grave of Garen. And more potential for some progression items in here is uh, there are three free chests at the top, and if one of them has a key, uh, he could choose to make his way make his way down as well. We've got big bucks, we've got an herb, and we've got some more big bucks. Ooh, and a droll hitting hard on Jake Hoper's side. Edgy, I do believe that the the wet noodle, uh, what we're talking about here, is an enemy uh, within the five zones surrounding Tantagel, uh, an enemy that will have five hit points or less and low strength. Uh, I believe they are programmed not to have spells, but unfortunately, uh, as you can see, there is a lot of area around start that is just not accessible to our players. And it can so happen that the uh, wet noodle spawns in a zone that is just not accessible. Uh, so the, some considerations have been made, but unfortunately, sometimes uh, no. these things just kind of happen. Jay Coper making, he doesn't know it yet, but he is making the smart play here. Just if he can somehow make it down to that lower level, uh, he's going to find himself a big upgrade that could. Uh, turn this whole thing around for him. It's a matter of seeing if he can endure one of these enemies here, the, the Poltergeist hitting for a little much and yeah, going six and seven at a time. BT, meanwhile, has found Rimmeldar, the town with easy access to magic keys. Yeah, BT can be able to pick himself up a full set of keys. Uh, will be wanting to check the chest in the inn on his way out, and then is going to have access to a lot of uh, a lot of things back home as well as in the grave. Exploration being swiftly completed here by BT. Oh, BT going in and the fairy flute in the chest. Interesting. So now we know that there is, uh, because there are, the fairy flute is one of the three items that normally you would have to search a spot on the map for. Uh, and so also having the found the token in Hawksness, we know that either Cole or the world map has no item this particular seed. And the other has Erdrick's armor. That is that, yes, that has to be the case. Erdrick's armor cannot be found in the chest. And BT with a steal of a deal, the half plate armor, normally a thousand gold in the regular game, only three gold in this case. So that's going to give 16 defense points to his total.
And Jay Coper finding a Star Wyvern. Oh, and it casts Sleep. Oh. Yeah, this is a rough. I'm fairly certain that I saw BT crit this thing for six, so Jake Hopper does have a chance to kill it, but uh, just not able to get the luck that he needs. As BT goes and finds out there are no coordinates, he will need to find Cole at some point in this seed. Yep, with the information, BT is aware that Cole is going to have Erdrick's armor, the best armor in the game. Best armor in almost any game, I would wager. And BT now going to head deep into the grave. Armed yep. with the key. Yeah, BT has the token in the heart, but still needing to find the Stones of Sunlight. And uh, maybe wanting to pick himself up a fighter's ring as well. So two chances for good items still remaining in this grave. Ooh. Oh, meanwhile, over on Jay Coper's side, we've got a golem that is going one for one. Oh, well, now one for two, apparently. Oh, can Jay Coper hold on? Oh... I want to say he did at least six or seven damage. That's very unfortunate. Meanwhile, on BT's side, he found in the middle of the grave the Fighter's Ring, which is going to add another two attack to his total. And that stays on even if you sell or discard the Fighter's Ring. Ooh, and Drakeema's with Hurt more. And not bothering with the knight here as he's trying to get down to the deepest part of Garen's grave. Coper running from a Wraith Knight. And the wings are deep in Garen's grave. Oh my goodness. Rogue Scorpions with the fire. The Dragon Lord 2 fire breath just uh, oh, just putting the hurt, just piling it on Jake Coper here. And BT finds Breconary and leaves just as quickly. There's been a theme of that here in this tournament. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, Breconary having not much to offer for BT, having already uh, found himself some decent gear and uh, I would imagine bought, uh, bought himself some herbs and such as well. BT thinking he had found the coastline, but uh, doing his due diligence and checking to make sure that this beach is clear of anything that he needs to investigate. BT taking out a wraith that, not the greatest in experience, but it's at almost max gold, 251. Any of the enemies can have anywhere from, I believe, 
four to 255 experience or gold. And BT finding another town, and it's Cole. So we're guaranteed to have the armor here. And I think that's just going to leave uh, whatever's in Tantigil Basement and also Tantigil Treasury as he does immediately use those wings and head back home. Checking to make sure that he has enough keys to do what he needs here. And we've got Fairy Water. The Stones of Sunlight. Another Fairy Water. And some big bucks. So that is all the progression items now for BT, just needing to find the uh, Shrine and Jerk Cave to trade those items in. Yeah, the Shrine, also uh, known as the Staff of Rain Cave, that is where BT and Jay Coper will trade in the Silver Harp in exchange for the Staff of Rain. And then the Rainbow Drop Cave, also known affectionately as the Jerk Cave, that is where you will trade in the Staff of Rain, Stones of Sunlight, and Erdrick's Token to obtain the rainbow drop and with that rainbow drop you can gain access to Charlock Castle to take on the Dragon Lord and BT now on the other continent and finds that's gotta be town. I would imagine that's gotta be Garenham and then whatever cave this is. Uh, we see a dark cave. This has to be Tablet, so uh, BT, knowing there's only one chest down there, decides not to find out what it is. And I'm thinking this, I'm not sure if we see bonus cave, but we should be pretty close to completion here uh, with the discovery. Yes, here is the shrine cave, where BT is going to pick himself up a staff of rain and then uh, potentially in the back of Garenham, we could find the Jerk and BT could be in go mode in under 30 minutes. Hmm. And Jake Hoper going with a, a different name and a different build, entering the capital K, which I believe is a max MP agility. Not sure what the build is, but uh, it, that could be his starting strength is higher than BT's was, uh, getting eight instead of six. So whatever stats you forego uh, in your build uh, generally are higher at the start. Question in chat, is Tantagel smack in the middle of the zone? Uh, no, Tantagel can appear uh, anywhere within the 15 by 15 a uh, set of squares that make up zone zero. So you, you you don't know where the edges of the zones are. You just have to kind of wander out and see if you find new monsters. And BT going to the back of Garenham and it has the rainbow drop cave, the jerk cave. And that will officially put BT in go mode. Uh, he knows where, he knows exactly where Sherlock is. He can go put that he, uh, he can go put that uh, rainbow drop bridge down anytime he wants choosing to grind a little bit here on some of the weaker monsters right next to home and to answer the question in chat from cyber venturer uh, it's not even so much uh, what well yeah I was going to say it's not so much what's keeping Jake Hoper behind it was an early critical hit about a minute in by BT on a Star Wyvern that took out the Star Wyvern. It was for six points, and that garnered 234 experience, and that was enough to vault him from level one to level eight just 62 seconds into the seed. And 
And the levels came pretty fast and furious, although the jump from level 15 to level 16 has been rather lengthy. Yeah, Probably. if I'm Jake Hopper, I, if I'm Jake Hopper, the minute I see this dot done, I'm just thinking, how? Yeah, it's been at least 1,200 experience to get from level 15 to 16, as it was 1,920 experience that BT had to get to 15. And we don't have the... Or at least I haven't seen the figures. No, BT hasn't been back to talk to the king in quite a while, so... We we don't know exactly when that next level is coming. Oh, pause eighty two says he says he saw it, so he's saying two thousand, uh, about two thousand more. Okay, to get to about four thousand. And with these poltergeists, I mean, he's going to make short work of that. Well, usually the circumstances where, uh, to answer the question in chat, where a uh, runner would ask for a re-roll, it's usually agreed upon if both members are generally about 20 to 30 minutes in and have made no progress they can agree to. The only drawback to that is if there is a significant lead from one person to another, if one asks for a re-roll and there's no response from the other, it is kind of a tell that there is a fairly significant lead. As the Magidrake putting a hurt on Jay Coper at the moment. And on BT's side, he has no idea that things have been this difficult. I mean, for all he knows, that Star Wyvern was the monster that, that Jacob were killed, you know, shortly after he did. Wow, 14 power coming on level 16, along with, looks like there was at least one was spell that nine, BT yeah. didn't have. BT making short work of a uh, green dragon as Jay Cooper sees one and just immediately resets out of it. Well, it looks like the green dragon, I mean, I'm, unless I missed a hurt more the hit, uh, only maybe about 10 or 11 HP. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot here. And BT going and getting his MP back, casting Repel first. I'm thinking he's wanting to make a dive. That could very well be the case. I didn't get the chance to see the stats. We know he was at, uh, I want to say it was 115-ish one, or a while back, and he's got at least, I would say, th 20 points since then. So I would say he's within the 130s right now. But yeah, the exact number, I, I don't know. Uh, well, he was looking to use the fairy water, but selected the fairy flute in error. There goes six seconds. And 34 minutes in, BT is utilizing the rainbow drop. We saw a record set, I believe, by McGrew with the first sub hour seat of the tournament, and we can see yet another record set right here. If BT makes the dive on this first attempt, oh boy. We don't know what's waiting in here yet. We know it's going to be 
ostensibly it's going to be pretty tough to run from, but uh, we, we don't have that information yet as we see, oh, a Wyvern blocking BT and uh, throwing out that Dragonlord 2 breath. As blocked thrice and triple Dragonlord breath sending BT back to the castle. I think BT's going to go for another level here as he sees it's only 9.33 to get to level 17. Does look like BT is deciding to fight his way across here. Uh, he is heading south and just, wow, taking out another Magitraki on the way and decides, hey, wait a second. One more kill like that, and he's going to get it. Looks like he might get it right here. Oh, and an excellent move, smashing the Poltergeist into 100 pieces. I believe he's just three experience shy of level 17. And he hits it, getting another three power, nine speed, eight hit points, eight magic points. Here, have this free extra heal more. Oof, and Poltergeist going after Jake Hoper. BT going to make another run into Sherlock. Jake Hopper and BT doing uh, the virtual high five in the worst way possible. Cyber Venture, not that we have seen so far, unfortunately. And BT this time able to get away from the Wyvern. He did get nine uh, response speed off that last level, and so far, yeah, it looks like looks to be making a significant difference. Wyvern's using Dragonlord Breath and doing so often. One of the advantages of Erdrick's armor, along with negating swamp spaces that normally do 2 damage per step, and the barrier tiles that normally do 15 damage per step, it negates those to zero. You heal one hit point for every step that you take, and the hurt spells, as well as the fire breath, are the damage is reduced by one third but trying to get away from the wyvern again bt sent back to the castle on top of all of that you gain stop spell immunity which uh, was removed in later games even the developers thought they made uh Erdrick's armor a little too op Some very strong misfortune here as uh, Jake Hopper decides once more to switch names and see if extra strength can bring him a little bit of extra luck. Uh, eight experience for level two to answer a question in chat. Oh, well, he's asking for BT. Uh, yeah, it's about, uh, yeah, almost 1700. The grand total 6582 needed. And he's at 49 and change. I believe that's 1673 is the difference. And Jake Hoper now with a metal slime and oh, there's the fire again. Yeah, Jake Hoper unfortunately with several misses there. Uh, if that monster had less than had less than five experience, he had a shot at it. But again, just 
Misfortune on misfortune on misfortune in this one. Uh, WDMD8, uh, BT crit a Star Wyvern for about 234 experience, and that propelled him to level 8, and he got that less than a minute into the seed. Uh, Jacob are unfortunately unable to get the same crit or any of the same results. Yeah, the early crit, see, it, it looks to be the difference thus far, and that, as I said, that <laughs> that one crit allowing to go from level 1 to level 8 getting a bunch of spells yeah everything going incredibly smoothly for BT after that first kill uh, as is evidenced by the fact that he is inside Sherlock and we're only 41 minutes into the match And simple Sarah, you, you are correct uh, that yeah that uh, for all we know yeah had that not occurred that they if they had both had these struggles that perhaps we already would have re-rolled the seed. There it is. There it is. Just before 42 minutes, Jake Hopper finally getting his first kill in much the same fashion as BT did. Uh, cyber Venturer, a noodle uh, is the colloquial term for uh, in Dragon Warrior Randomizer Chaos Mode. Uh, enemy stats are completely randomized, however, one uh, enemy within the five zones surrounding Tantagel, uh, one in the center, north, south, east, and west, uh, there is one monster guaranteed to have five or less hit points and very low strength. And again, just like BT before, the level's coming quickly for Jay Coper. A little less than a minute from levels 8 to level 10. Ooh, and sleep and Dragonlord breath from the wizard. And BT is now on the final floor of Sherlock Castle, that seventh basement. Foregoing the chest and the treasury, only the death necklace. A potential useful item he has yet to find, but as his HP is not high enough, uh, not even going to look to see if it's there. The red slimes are pesky this seed. Hitting for 25, 37. And BT using his last two herbs. Jay Coper now taking out a Metal Slime and also a Demon Knight. Still has another four or 500 
experience to go to the next level. Jake Hopper really hoping he's going to find the armor gear and uh, will be not entirely disappointed to find the token, but uh, yeah, I, I, I have to imagine he's really, really hoping the armor is here right now. BT burning another heal more against this red slime here, choosing to hurt more it as well to try to get rid of it faster. And unfortunately, the hurt more does not land. Down to only seven heal mores now. Hmm. And Jay Coper using the grind spot, maybe more so for a, a an enemy gold grind than an experience grind because it's only 39 experience per night. And one more hurt more spell. So with roughly uh, 1100 gold Wow, BT sent back again. BT contending with that uh, red slime for a couple minutes, it looked like there, and uh, un unfortunately unable to escape with his life. And able to get 170 on an Axe Knight is Jay Coper. And Green Dungeon, or the Green Dragons are, uh, Rolling out here, and oh, there's a there's a crit hit for 234, and that's going to get him a level. Massive, massive response speed for Jay Cooper, highlighting the difference in builds from our players here. Uh, Seiryu X, uh, what happened was uh, it appears that uh, the Wet Noodle Monster uh, uh, in this particular seed uh, maybe spawned in an inaccessible location for our players and uh, BT getting the luck of landing a critical hit on a Star Wyvern for 234 experience within the first minute of the game, skyrocketing him to level 8. Uh, Jay Coper, in the meantime, was not able to find a kill until 41 minutes into the seed, uh, but things have been going quickly since that point. And BT continuing, this is, I believe, his third attempt into Sherlock, or are we up to four? Yeah, I would say th three or four for sure. But running into trouble from the Wyverns. Running into trouble from the Red Slimes. Jake Hober about to find himself a big stick. And does get himself the Silver Harp as well. Oh, and a stone man with hurt more, and that's going to send BT back once again. Wow. Only 369 to the next level. He may very well pick it up here uh, before he even gets back into Sherlock. And Jake Hopper relieved to see the Erdrick sword. Ooh. 
Ooh, and a combination of sleep and Dragonlord breath from the Wraith Knight. BT going back into Sherlock as Jay Coper going up another level. And isn't too terribly far away from level 15. Maybe about another 150 experience. Meanwhile, BT is roughly a hundred experience away from level 18. Jacob are trying to hurt more a Rogue Scorpion. As BT goes up to level 18. Six more response speed, the main takeaway from that level, going to increase his odds ever so slightly of making it down to the Dragonlord on this attempt. And Jay Coper looking around Sherlock as BT navigating through in the dark. And Jake Coper getting up to 14 now after disposing of a poltergeist. Now, if BT continues to struggle here in Charlotte Castle and Jake Hoper able to take advantage of the exploration, there is certainly a possibility to catch up. Yeah, anything could happen here. BT was able to put this together really quickly. It would, uh, Jake Hoper would only need about another 10 or 15 minutes here to, uh, to catch up. I would say it would be about two or three more failed dives here. We'll see if BT, what happens on this attempt. As Jay Coper gets up to level 15. Ooh, but hit with the Wyvern's Dragonlord breath. As BT again, approaching the final basement of Sherlock. Let's see what other issues. Uh, the Droll Magi being a bit pesterish. Not quite letting him run away. Droll Magi with pretty high agility. But the second try, BT able to get away. And another DL2 breath from a Wyvern on Jake Hoper. 
as BT burns a heal more. BT gets away from a red slime only to encounter another one here and manages to get away from that one rounding this third corner. J. Coper using Hurt More on the Metal Slime, and that is going to take care of him to give him another 102 experience. Oh, and the Red Slime taking BT out again. At least 15 minutes here from BT just spent trying to get to this Dragon Lord. Uh, pause 82, as far as I know, we have not seen one, but I, I don't believe BT ever checked the hidden shop in uh, Cantlin. Potentially could be one there. BT choosing to fight his way through these stone men on the first floor, uh, about his fifth attempt here. It certainly has been a struggle. A lot of people thought, oh, it's going to be smooth sailing, it's going to be a, a definite sub hour, and Sherlock. The ultimate equalizer said, no, I don't think so. We're not going to make this uh, uh, as lopsided as the early going had started. Now, if Jake Hoper can keep finding enemies like that, like the Star Wyvern, like the Magidrakey, even to a degree, the poltergeist. Those are the those are the ticket. Those are the big ticket ones. Yeah, making short work of what uh, at one point seemed to be an insurmountable experience lead. Uh, now down to just about thirty five hundred. But a Wraith Knight with sleep. We know they've been troublesome in the past. Oh, but the Wraith Knight runs away. Wraith Knight using the uh, sleep and run tactics here. Yeah, usually BT. seen by our players as opposed to the enemies. BT not, and never went and bought, um, I guess the closest towns are a bit far away, so not buying herbs and forced to burn a heal more on the second, uh, sorry, third floor here of Sharlock. And Metal Scorpion's proving not very fruitful in terms of gold or experience. Uh, da, Farad, question in chat. Where was Cole? I believe Cole was the last uh, town found by BT on the main continent. So uh, a considerable amount of distance between uh, Erdrick's Armor and the start for Jake Hoper here. Lots more exploration that he needs to do before he's going to find that. Uh, Jay Coper uh, trying to get away here from this rogue scorpion having a little trouble doing so and he's just spamming the dragon lord breath oh 
and it's got heal more too. As the red slime continuing to give BT trouble, and he's going to use another heal more. As this red slime is relentless, not letting him get away. Able to do 23 damage to this. It they must be almost equal in terms of agility. Just not finally the luck running out for BT here as Jay Cobra gets a Kaishin no Ichigeki to take down another Magidraki and just cut that experience gap even harder. BT now down to basement five and to basement six now. But the red slime getting a snipe attack. BT choosing to contend with this one. And using another heal more. Down to eight now, unfortunately. We have a frightful Axonite on Jay Coper's side. I do believe the max an enemy can roll is 140 HP, and it looks like the slimes are pretty much there. Uh, whether he fights or runs, BT is it's costing him a heal more almost every single time. Jay Coper up to level 16. BT about as close to this Sharlock mini boss as he's ever been. We still don't know what it is. And this has been the reason the metal slimes, which he's BT has decided to just go after, but burning a lot of heal mores in the process. Uh, it takes an excellent move. Another one of those Kaishin no Ichigekis to take out the red slime. And now Droll Magi being a little pesterish. Wow, 255 the max experience coming out of that Droll Magi as BT taking the time to walk back a little bit of HP. Uh, Sports Hefe looks like a little bit of both as far as exploration and grinding. Oh, and a, another huge hit from BT. He gets through the Wyvern and perhaps looking to walk off some of that health, but instead walks into a red slime, burns yet another heal more. He gets another critical hit on a red slime. On oh, another droll magi. So now the question is, even if BT, I mean, now the BT is close to getting to the Dragon Lord, what's he going to have left? I mean, as noted in chat, he can certainly check how strong the Dragon Lord 1 is and see if there are any spells, as Dragon Lord 2 can have anywhere between 100 and 230 hit points and can cast either Sleep or Heal. And a one shot 42 HP takes out Dragon Lord 1. Th just spell not working. 
Yeah, fishing for the soft spell here, just checking to see. And he did land it. Oh, goodness. Here we go. Oh, swinging on 46 here and getting the luck. Wow. Dragon Lord not choosing to use Fire Breath on that turn. That could have ended things early as he now gets a third attack. Meanwhile, Jay Coper back in the mountain cave. Using his last heal more. He's got to hope to start heal locking it here. And he's not able to do so. I just did the calculation. He attacked for 128 hit points. So we know that Dragonlord 2 has at least 129, but it could be as much as 230. Yeah, I would say it's it potentially significantly more than that if uh, the Dragonlord has heal. Uh, we didn't see it. The only clue that he might have heal is we did see the stop spell land. BT now with, I believe this is either the sixth or seventh attempt in Sherlock. Talk about how it's the equalizer. Yeah, 20 plus minutes spent attempting to just do the last thing he needs to do to finish the game. Uh, question in chat. Yes, uh, uh, the stop spell resist does get randomized. It can roll anywhere from zero out of 16 chance which means stop spell would land every time to as high as 15 out of 16 chance to resist which means it'll miss 93 percent of the time Uh, perhaps BT trying to conserve MP by navigating, or maybe it's just that first level they navigate in the dark. Oh, and the Wyvern sending BT out again. Only 341 experience to the next level, so if he continues to fight these uh, stone men and uh, droll magi on the way down, he could make that up quickly here. Well, there's 234 of it right there. Only about another 107, I believe, to the next level. Jacob, we're continuing to explore. Well, 
another 10 hit points on that level. Death Necklace could come into play here as that's going to give uh, over 130 max to BT. So if he chooses to check out the treasury in Sherlock, should he make it that far, uh, he could have an option to give himself a little bit more attack power for this next attempt. And Jake Hoper finding the Stones of Sunlight Cave that has an herb in this case. As he also made his way to level 17. And BT back into Sherlock. Jake Hoper now in Cantlin. The Silver Shield 7130. I know we were talking about that earlier. So the real pain of this seed has been the wyvern and the red slime. Although early on here an assist can go to the stone man. Some of the differences between builds showing up here as we see 109 MP max for Jake Hoper despite being two levels behind. A little bit more resources on the side of Jake Hoper there. Is Jake Hoper now in the grave and is going to find some money and herb and some more money. No keys yet so he can't make his way down. And more trouble from the red slime and another critical hit. And another level. Wow, that's not quite gonna give him another heal more, but that five power could, wow, swinging for 146 now. So, when he gets down to the Dragon Lord, it'll be an attack range of 11 to 23. Uh, question is, is there a max level? Yes, 30 is the max that you can achieve in uh, Dragon Warrior. Now, we could hit a point where there's a good 7,000, 8,000 experience gain from one level to the next. The way they have these set up, it's highly unlikely. I mean, I haven't seen a seed go, I think, higher than level 23.
Well, Ryu Seishin, uh it, it definitely doesn't need 65-535. I would imagine that based on the fast experience seed that is part of the standard flags, that the potential highest it could be for level 30 would be 49,151. But then it even pulls a random number, so once you hit whatever that that top number is for level 30, I mean, it could be it could be 21,000. It could I mean, it, anything after that is just extra work here. Jacober finding himself a Rimmeldar, so that means keys, which is going to open up a lot of stuff for him, and that very, very cheap three gold half plates. Meanwhile, the red slimes continuing to be problematic for BT. It'll just plug away at it, but getting knocked down into the teens and hit points and having to utilize a heal more again, now down to only 62. That's what, seven heal mores? And a Dragonlord Breath from BT. And oh, another one hitting him for 46 when he only had 45. Jay Coper finding Cole, which is going to be the armor for him. 1876 to the next level for BT. So going to be a couple more dives before he gets there. Grand total of twelve six fifty one. BT working on a golem now. And chat noting, remember when this looked like it could be a sub-45 seed? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Oh, that is great. <laughs> great minds think alike. <laughs> I swear we didn't script that. That was good. <laughs> no, that... <laughs> Opposite sides of the country, but same mental wavelengths. As BT back into Sherlock again. And now Jay Coper able to get some exploration and be able to weave through those swamps, but instead casting return is going to check the treasury. And going to be glad to see those stones of sunlight. We'll have to see if uh, Jake Hoper decides to go check. Uh, it, uh, I don't think he has the token yet. Uh, I do believe he still needs to go back to Hawksness. BT with another critical hit, this time on a blue dragon for 132. Oh, and yes, he does have the Erdrich's token as uh, earlier on he was actually, uh, if you remember, Jay Coper was, uh, I guess, gold farming the knight that was guarding the token in Hawksness. Oh, right, right after he died. Out, 
three or four of them, maybe even five, before whittling all of his MP down. Yeah, right after he got hurt more, now I remember. So as, as chat noting, he needs the... Basically, the two the two caves, uh, the the staff of rain cave and the rainbow drop cave, and Stone Man casting hurt more on BT, and once again for what has to be the eighth time, he is rejected in Sherlock. Dick Hopper doesn't know it yet, but he's he's found everything he needs. Uh, he just needs to walk south uh, a little bit, and he's going to find himself that. Uh, He's going to find himself that Shrine Cave. Uh, going to find the Jerk first uh, here in the back of Garenham, but Shrine Cave not too far away. And potential here for Jake Hopper to maybe make a play for the Silver Shield, uh, as he is very close to the amount of gold that he needs. He needs maybe about another 1,300 gold. As I want to say, it was 71-something. And Jay Coper seeing the jerk, realizing that he still has to find the Staff of Rain Cave. And Jay Coper getting hit with the Sleep Run tactic by the Wraith Knight. And Jake Hope were able to do a little bit of exploration. He finds the Staff of Rain Cave. And he knows where the Jerk is, as he saw him moments ago. So he will be able to trade the Staff of Rain and Stones of Sunlight in for the Rainbow Drop. And you can imagine, having passed by Sherlock a few times while grinding up, that he is going to make a beeline for Sherlock Castle. Looking at the stats, 128 attack power, a 7 to 14 attack range on the Dragon Lord. And I don't know if he recognizes, but he is about a hundred and change experience away from going to level 18. BT should be less than a thousand away from 21, right? Uh, correct. He is about uh, now about a little less than 600, about 580. And, and now... Andrew Drake, he's going to do it. Yeah, and if I'm Jay Cooper at this point, I'm thinking, man, I got my first kill about 40 minutes. I put everything together here really quick. What is going on in Sharlock that has caused this race not to end? Or maybe he's thinking that there's, well, I was going to say, maybe he isn't thinking that there was a similar struggle as if that was the case. I mean, I don't know if a reroll was asked for. If it was and was ignored, then maybe Jay Coper might be wondering, hmm, why is this not over yet? But regardless, Jay Coper has the rainbow drop. And foregoing the Silver Shield to go get his MP back, and I would imagine, yes, he is going to beeline his way to Sherlock for his very first dive. Yeah, 7-8 time. Uh, if both players in a match uh, agree to reroll the seed, yes, one can be requested. And it is solely at the discretion of the players to reroll the seed. We actually had that happen two nights ago with Azrael Ravenheart and Captain Green 7. And Captain Green in that race had agreed to the re-roll just seconds before busting things open 
And in the re-roll, the match ended up going to Asriel Ravenheart. So he could have potentially had the lead and, and rolled over Asriel, but showing good sportsmanship and agreeing to have that re-roll. Oh, BT getting an excellent hit on this red slime, making it down to the Dragon Lord's floor with significantly more resources and picking himself up another level. Four, one, nine, and eleven for the stat gains in level twenty-one. He won't be able to benefit from the MP here, but should he uh, fall to the Dragon Lord again, this will add uh, two more heal mores to his total for a next attempt, should one be necessary. But here's the red slime. And we'll see how Jake Hoper handles some of these. He's going to utilize a heal more here before addressing the Wyvern. Wyvern casting heal. And kind of spamming it here, which... Uh, takes up a little bit of time, gives Jake Hoper that much more time to advance a little bit further into Sherlock, but now with 93 MP, a little bit more equipped to take on the Dragon Lord. And quick work. Now the stop spell not hitting. And just like before, it hits on the second attempt. And he gets an attack afterwards. Just uh, amazing damage rolls here for BT. Already hitting much stronger for 23. This one for 12, though, on the low side. And a number 19... BT feeling pretty confident here, not choosing to risk it on 48, choosing to play it safe. He's up to 119. Oh, and another 23. That's going to put him up to 142. One seventy eight now. Up to one ninety. There he did oh, it. There it is. With two hundred and twelve HP, that final strike of twenty two is going to do it. A lot closer than initially indicated. But that notwithstanding, ladies and gentlemen, get out your GGs for BT, who is going to finish this race with an official SRL time of 89 minutes and 2 seconds. And if I'm not mistaken, that will unfortunately officially eliminate Jake Coper from the bracket stage. That is correct. And in record time, I do believe we have BT in chat with us. I believe we do, although I believe the, the mute is on. Now it is not. What's going on, guys? Oh, well, wow. Uh, <laughs> where to start with this uh, with this seed here? I mean, first of all, congratulations and GG. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I mean, what, what, what was going through your mind? I mean, 
a mere minute in and all of a sudden you hit the star wyvern for 234 and jump from level one to level eight i was very happy about that the hardest part of the chaos seeds is determining who's going to give you the experience early Initially, it looked like it was going to be a landslide, but Char uh, we mentioned Sherlock is the equal. That certainly was in this case, as uh, the first kill for Jay Coper didn't come until about 41 minutes after you had gotten yours, about, uh, about 40, just before the 42-minute mark of this race. Wait, you're saying he got his first kill after I was in go mode? Yes. Yes. That's absurd. However, because of the uh, what ended up being, I think nine trips to that you took to Sherlock, that allowed Jay Coper to build some of that momentum back, and he is actually right now on the bottom floor of Sherlock Castle. How much MP does he have? What level is he at? He is at level eighteen with one hundred and three MP. And he also opted to pick up the death necklace from the uh, treasury. He's got to um, he's got to take every single risk. He doesn't have enough attack power or, or HP to survive that. Well, that was also something else of note. There was uh, some early changing in strats, uh, initially restarting at one point and changing uh, the build and going with the capital K, which is uh, a, an agility MP build. Ooh, so I, I couldn't run from Red Slimes even at 116 agility. Yeah, they're being obnoxious to Jay Coper as well. Yeah, he, it looks like he had to burn a couple of heal mores on that. He's now down to 82 MP. And perhaps now the realization's coming in, oh, this is why I was able to ca catch up and why the dot done didn't come in. I mean, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be a, a sub-50 minute seed the way things were just rolling along. And I mean, you were at level 17 about 36 minutes in yeah I was ready for a 42 minute GG but, and then a 52 minute and then a 62 minute and then about an hour and 15 minute and then I didn't even know it was 90 minutes yeah 8902 is the uh, the official time on it as Jay Cobra now dispa uh, dispatching of the or dispensing I should say of the Wyvern the Guardian but running into another one on the path to the Dragon Lord and burning another heal more here. Uh, was chat able to count the damage on Dragon Lord? Uh, well, I don't know if chat was following along with it. I was keeping track, and uh, it looks like your final hit of 22 got it up to 212. So somewhere between 191 and 212 was what the Dragon Lord 2 was sitting at. I must have been super close in that first fight. He hit me for my exact HP value. Uh, the first go, I kept track of that too. You had gotten to 128. Oh. Well, nowhere close. <laughs> Halfway there. Well, you also had a pretty low amount of MP. When you came back, you were stronger. I mean, the highest damage that you had hit for in that first run was 19, and they were... Uh, well, there was a there was a twelve. Well, they were mostly in the the mid to upper teens. Whereas this second time around, you had six different hits in the twenties. Yeah, and I was able to three shot a couple red slimes. Let's talk, let's talk strategy here. So you don't know when your next level's coming unless you bring Gwaylin's love or you die. So I'm figuring. We'll knock out a few blue dragons, draw magi on the way down. Maybe if we level up, great. If we don't, well, maybe we got part of a level up. Well, Jay Cooper now working on the dragon lord, but hitting for single digits and a couple of double digits as well. And down to now using his Neil more left. Yeah, this does not look good. He won't cast heal either, so that's uh, unfortunate, but you can't get extra hits. 
Getting some doubles, though, the, the physical rolls going in Jay Coper's favor so far. And pretty much a max heal more on that one. Nice. 100. Mm hmm. But now using his last heal more, so down to about two more attacks. I will admit I wasn't keeping track on this one, so he's just going to swing and hope, and it's not going to quite be enough. Oh, that nine is heartbreaking. And it looks like we have the official forfeit. But still a gallant effort, and considering where where he had come from, I mean that it, he was right back in it at the at the end. I mean, a lot of people were were kind of casting him off, but I mean that tenacity that perseverance to stick through and I mean make it all the way up to the dragon lord just mere minutes after you had finished after having a initially a, a 40 plus minute deficit to catch up from I mean he, he played exceptionally well to get to that point yeah I absolutely agree I hope he hops in here he's not too salty Well, as far as uh, as as we uh, as we await for that here, uh, as far as the progression of the uh, the tournament, so this puts you to one and one BT, and uh, that puts you into the uh, we're calling it the Erdrick Advancement Round. Uh, so it's a uh, it's a winning your in scenario as far as far as the bracket stage. That sounds fun. Yep, that will all be determined. In the third round of the Swiss section of this tournament, which will be determined late Tuesday night following the Reusation and Angry Larry matchup. And I believe we have Jake Hoper in chat. Uh, as I was mentioning, a, a gallant effort on your part. Uh, we'll, we'll go over things here. Uh, here at, uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, from. It, for, for, it, well, I was, I was gonna say, uh, uh, Lavkin, do you want to uh, you want to start with this one here? Uh, Jake Hopper, man, uh, I I applaud your tenacity. That was a really tough start. <laughs> I, I, I it was uh, it was ridiculous. I couldn't figure out anything to do. Every single thing that I did did not work. So, um, you know, I tried. Uh, tried fishing and every single monster i tried uh you know exploring tried getting into different zones and trying to find monsters in different zones and just yeah and even trying and even resetting and trying different builds yeah yeah i figured um that uh it would be nice to have a oh, okay i just realized that i'm still on that build wow that might have made a difference in the end. <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually noticing that that it it uh, was increasing your run chances as well as giving you a little bit more resources than BT despite being a lower level. I think BT finished at twenty one, and uh, your MP was pretty close to what his was. Uh, yeah, again, despite the level difference. Yeah, but my strength would have been way below what his was. Yeah, considerably lower. Um, like this is not a strength build, so. Right. Uh. Chat asking uh, whether or not a reroll was asked for in this particular seed. No, there, there. I mean, nothing was asked for. I was certainly considering it. I yeah, mean, I, I was considering it twice. Once when, uh, you know, I didn't kill anything for forty minutes, and once again when I really thought the map was broken. Like, I went around the whole thing a couple times and then I went back into Mountain Cave just to make sure I didn't miss a chest with a key in it or something that would have opened up the Swamp Cave for me. Um, and it, yeah, I can't believe I missed that that little path down there. But that was the only way out of the beginning area, I guess. And Yeah. 
Yeah, and despite all that, uh, what with uh, the bad luck in Sherlock, uh, those uh, wyverns with the Dragonlord breath, the droll magi couldn't run from, and the beefy bread slimes. I mean, it, it was actually really close there towards the end. Yeah, I I guess I almost came back. It but, was uh, it was it was very very close. Yeah, it was. It was it was tempting to. Uh, to maybe grind or maybe um, uh, see about getting the money for a silver shield because I wasn't now, that far from it, but there wasn't any good money monsters popping up for me. So Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to make a play for that, but yeah, I was paying attention as you were kind of walking from the Shrine Cave back to Garenham, and yeah, it didn't look like there was anything uh, really worth grinding in the area, so... Yeah, but the like the fact that it took me so long to get going, um, uh, just meant that I just had to had to go. I couldn't, I couldn't really screw around if I anything was going to take any considerable amount of time. Yeah, I don't blame you for making that decision at all. Yeah, your efficiency in that latter part of the game. I mean. BT actually ended up getting a crit on a Star Wyvern one minute in and was able to vault from level one to level eight. So yeah, same for me, but but just at, you know, not one minute in, 41 minutes. Yeah, in. 41 minutes and change in. So, I mean, be, to be able to come back from that deficit and make it as close as it was where you were both in Sherlock at the same time, BT was having trouble getting through Sherlock, and I believe it took nine attempts before it was finally successful. I mean, you can talk about RNG and Sherlock all you want, but there's a lot of different strategies that you can do, and you can always grind more uh, at it to make your Sherlock dip safer, you know? More strength, more uh, agility, more MP, HP, those things are all going to help you. But if for that first kill at the front, there's nothing you can do to help you. I, I mean, all you can do is, it, well, I, I don't want to say there's nothing you can do. You, either you, you keep running your face into the wall over and over again, or uh, you can try to manipulate it. So I, I, I was trying to do that for a second, but then I was seeing, like, I was resetting and I, I was watching the, the NPC walking. And I got like four different walking in four tries, so I I don't think I was clearing things consistently enough to even consider that possibility. So, um, yeah, yeah, I would say manipulating that first kill would be uh, exceedingly difficult, but it's a, a consideration to be made for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, it might be easier for uh, the people who have done that sort of thing, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it it might have been faster than what I did here. It might have been. Well, unfortunately, uh, the results, the way they shake out here, uh, BT is going to go to one and one He is going to advance to our Airjik Advancement stage, where uh, he'll be facing off with another one and one for a chance to make it into the bracket stage. Uh, Jake Hoper uh, falling to 0 and 2 here, unfortunately, will be eliminated from the bracket stage of this tournament. Uh, Again, those of you in chat, please go ahead and give our wonderful runners, BT and Jay Coper, a follow. Uh, feel free to drop a follow on my co-commentator here, Furon Burgundy, Ryu Sation on tracking, and JK Allen restreaming. And uh, Furon Burgundy, you want to tell us about our upcoming matches? Oh, yes. Well, uh, tomorrow we actually have a respite, uh, a little bit of a break in the action. Uh, no tournament matches set tomorrow, but Monday night we have a quadruple header coming your way here on the Randomania Networks. Uh, starting off at 8 o'clock Eastern Monday night, you have Janus against the Seawolf 1. Also a pair of matchups at 9 p.m. Eastern, Lord of the Synth against Amazing Toaster. And then you also have the Tie-Dye Guy against Katen619. And then just a half hour later at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, Spark Over against Tristel. And then rounding out the second round matchups will be on Tuesday night 
It will be our tracker here, Ryu Seishin, taking on Angry Larry, and that'll be Tuesday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. And then following that matchup, the third round of the Swiss style will be announced, and we'll see what those final matchups are before heading to the bracket stage. All right. Well, I think that's going to just about do it for us. Thank you, Jay Coper, for uh, joining us here for the post-game interview. Uh, thank you, BT, as well. Uh, yeah, congratulations to both of you for uh, putting on a great show there at the end. And uh, thank you so much to Fur on Burgundy and for myself, Lavkin, and everyone else here involved in the tournament. That's going to do it for us. Good night, guys.